Welcome to this second installment in our study in the book of Jonah in Moments with Mike. Very briefly at the beginning of this time together, I want to set before you the major themes in the book of Jonah. Clearly, the first one is it sets forth the resurrection of Jesus. In the release of Jonah from the belly of the great fish, Jesus himself highlights that in the gospel accounts. Secondly, it presents in chapter 2, salvation as being a result of faith alone and not of any works that could be done, especially as we see the great revival amongst the people of Nineveh. Up until that time, it was the greatest single revival in the history of the known world. Third, it presents the grace of God being extended to all men. Fourth, it reminds us that God will not cast us aside because of our failure to act in accordance with his will. Note the beginning of the first section, chapter 1, the word of the Lord came to Nineveh, and in chapter 3, the word of the Lord came again to Jonah. It is a marvelous truth and one that brings great grace to our lives to recognize that we are never thrust totally aside, that God will restore us from a point of personal failure and a time of personal disobedience and continue to release us into places of importance of ministry and service among others. Fifth, the character of God is revealed. We see that most beautifully in Jonah chapter 4 and verse 2. And it is the third time in the Old Testament that almost word for word the character of God is described. First seen in Exodus 34. And then finally, the universal call of God upon people. Ours is not a gospel that's message is limited to the North American shore. Ours is a gospel message that needs to be trumpeted throughout the world because it is God's intent, God's design, God's desire and God's delight to reach out to save all men and women who would respond to the gift of faith that's given to them. Today, I want to look at verse 3 of chapter 1. It is probably the most well-known of the verses in the first section of this study. It reads like this. Upon hearing the word of the Lord in verse 2, But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Now we need to understand that Jonah was very much aware that he could not flee from the very presence of God. We know that from Psalm 139 and verses 7 through the remainder of that text. When it says that Jonah arose to flee from the very presence of the Lord, it simply means this. I'm done being a prophet. I'm done preaching. I don't want to go where you sent me. It's not that Jonah thought that he could somehow get lost and not be found. But it is that Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh because of the horrific atrocities that had been attributed to that empire, not only against the nation of Israel, but surrounding nations as well. But I wonder if in Jonah's actions, a failure to be obedient to the call of the Lord to preach the good news of a message that God loves and God saves, even the most horrific and evil of people. I wonder if there's not a practical application for us. How many of us, for example, are running away from an area of service or ministry that God has equipped us and called us to? How many of us are running away from being agents of reconciliation, not just in the preaching of God's message to those yet in their sins, but how many of us have not reached out the arm of reconciliation to someone that we know and care about and we are currently estranged from through no fault of our own or no known action of our own, but we have failed to even attempt to make that relationship right. How many of us are running away from some point of stewardship responsibility, whether it's the stewardship of our body, 1 Corinthians 6, or the stewardship of our gifts and talents, our natural abilities? How many of us are sitting on the sidelines when God has clearly called us into the arena of service? How many of us have 
run away from the development of a devotional life. Or we're living on, if you will, stale bread, stale manna. And we're not really pushing in and pressing in to a greater and a deeper walk with the Lord. And finally, how many of us, in full acknowledgement that there is a besetting sin, according to Hebrews 12, the first two verses, there's some area of weakness in our life. There's some sin that we find so difficult to overcome. How many of us are running away from running to God and asking for the needed grace, the needed empowerment of the Spirit, the needed hope that Scripture brings to bring our lives back into a place of repentance and restoration? Jonah may be an age-old story. It may be a story that in many ways is unlike any that is elsewhere found in Scripture. But Jonah, like us, is a man of frailty and foolishness. We'll see you next time.